Hey, good afternoon. This book is called The Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley. It's set in a kind of alternate version of London in the 1880s. You get the sort of like a historical setting, but you also get a few more fantastical elements. So I guess I think one really good example was when the main character mentions uh, I guess back when his father passed away, his father didn't leave a will and they had to consult a spirit medium and get his father's will sort of like posthumously through the medium. And it's sort of taken for granted that this is something that is legitimate that people can do. Like, you know, psychics and certain types of supernatural abilities exist. And you also have certain physicists that study how this might work, which uh, I guess goes around the theory of ether or some type of um, substance, I guess, that exists in the world that influences and is influenced by more supernatural phenomena. The main character or one of the main characters is a young man called Nathaniel Steepleton, though he goes by Thaniel for short. He starts off by working as a telegraphist for the government. So essentially, I guess he um, is one of those people who receives like coded messages for the government. Only he receives the mysterious gift of a gold pocket watch, which actually saves his life six months after he gets it. Like he doesn't really know who gave it to him or why. And he follows, I guess, the clues in the watch to look for the watchmaker, who is a Japanese immigrant called Mori. So Mori actually has some pretty unusual abilities, like it's described as remembering the future, and this plays a pretty major role in like the way the plot unfolds. So technically you can divide the plot for this book into two big sections. Like the first half is focused on like the fact that there's been a series of bombs and bomb threats from like these Irish nationalists. And the bombs are constructed partly with super advanced clockwork mechanisms, so Mori is a major suspect. It's partly the fact that he is a suspect uh, for this crime that the main character begins to like live with him as a tenant where he's like trying to keep an eye on this person and trying to discover whether or not he's actually connected to the crimes that have been committed. Then the second half, mm, I guess, is more focused on the conflict between Mori and a young woman who's also technically a main character called Grace. So they're both friends with Nathaniel, but they really, really don't like each other. Like, I guess Mori seems concerned that she, uh, she will somehow take this friend away from him, whereas she's, like, once she learns about his ability, uh, because he dislikes her, she's kind of paranoid that he's gonna try to kill her or something, and does a lot of mm, not very good things, I guess, because of this fear. So the second half of the story is largely focused on the conflict between these two characters and mainly what she does, like, in response to it. Like, the unifying plot line for the book is the a friendship that develops between Thaniel and Mori. Like, Mori points out, I suppose, that his abilities can make him really unsettling to people. But uh, I guess Thaniel is one of the people he's met that uh, can both sort of accept him for who he is and what he can do, and also, like, just is someone that Mori actually likes to spend time with, and I think this development of like their relationship and how they come to understand one another and stuff is probably like the major unifying thread throughout the story. I kind of have mixed feelings about this book, like I think there were a lot of things I liked about it, like especially hearing about a lot of Mori's inventions, and I think the setup of remembering the future was, you know, created some kind of interesting tensions and stressful ones, especially like his pet clockwork octopus, like it acts a lot like a real octopus and I just, you know, like I think I always like funny pets and stuff and it's just kind of entertaining to hear about the octopus and what it does, like 
stealing the main character's socks and how other people react to it, since, you know, octopus aren't necessarily like the cute and cuddly kind of creature, so it can sort of unsettle people. But um, I think some things I did not like were... Mm, I think the kind of plotline issues that arise from misunderstandings that I feel like could be easily solved if people just talked things through and trusted each other more. Like that type of conflict plot lines are ones that I don't tend to particularly enjoy. And I think it kind of bothered me that the only prominent female character was someone that I just could not uh, sympathize with. It's like I wanted to sympathize with her because she's a woman in a time when women didn't have a lot of independence and when like wanting to be a scientist and stuff is a kind of career that makes you not very socially desirable and stuff like that. So I kind of wanted to sympathize with her, but she does so many selfish, self-centered things. Like she seems perfectly willing to hurt people for the sake of her own like self-interest that I just can't support her as a character and I think since she's the only mainer female character in the book like as a woman I find that a little bit irritating. Overall though I do think the feel of the world and stuff was kind of interesting to me.